you know, first of all, he had a really good story to tell. All my life, uh, I've heard his stories, you know, and uh, especially when he died and the funeral, um, all these people were talking about his stories and it just seemed such a shame that the stories would just fade away. Um, there was that and also actually a, a big reason why I wrote the book was a dream. I had a, Judy Kilgore had approached me about writing the book and I was getting my master's degree at the time and I thought, no, I'm not going to do it because it'd be a lot of work. Um, but then one night I had a dream and it was me and a 25 year old Merle Kilgore sitting on a hilltop. And, you know, I, I really didn't know a 25 year old Merle. I hardly knew what that guy would have looked like, but there I was sitting on a hilltop with him. And, uh, I remember listening in on him and he was talking, he had a bottle of whiskey in his hand and, and, uh, I, I don't know. I woke up from that dream and I thought, I'm going to write that book. So I called Judy Kilgore and I said, Hey, let's do it. I'm, I'm on. So it took me a while to do it, but uh, I finally pulled it off. Yeah. I think a lot of it was the title itself. These are my people. And then I thought, you know, I played a lot with the structure. A lot of it too was uh, the challenge of writing the book. Merle laid down the groundwork with all the stories, but kind of trying to figure out a structure, uh, you know, a, a narrative that had a beginning, middle, and end, um, it was kind of challenging. But then I started thinking, once I had the title, These Are My People, I thought, okay, each chapter is a people. And each, chap each person had some kind of significance and also um, contributed to the development of his growth in the music business. Yeah, definitely. That was a, a big challenge because I hear little stories all the time. I mean, I, everybody I meet has a Merle Kilgore story. And a lot of those didn't make it into the book simply because the stories that I chose were the ones that sort of contributed to this character arc that could bring us to the ending of, of the story. So yeah, I did have to kind of sift through um, a lot of stories, and the ones that made it were, I guess, contributed to the, the plot itself. Yeah. Well, you know, as I wrote the story, I learned a lot about the background, too. Uh, what I did learn is that it's a very obfuscated um, story there, uh, a lot of different origin stories. What I know for certain is that June and Merle wrote it, and in fact, I, I've seen the house where they wrote uh, the book, you know, they'd met in the early 60s while they were on the Johnny Cash tour. And it was June's idea to, hey, Merle, come over to the house. We, they both lived in Madison. Come over and we'll write this song. So they, or they would write songs and they would get together every Tuesday night at three o'clock or whatever. And they'd sit down and write. Uh, and then one night they started writing The Ring of Fire. And apparently it came out of a a poetry book, or it was a love letter. That part of the story, not you know, I'm not completely sure of. Um, but nonetheless, they they wrote us. They wrote the song. They kind of got stuck on it. Um, Merle got home, and June called him and said, "Hey, Anita, my sister, recording an album. Come back. Let's finish this song." So he raced back. They finished it. They proposed it to her, and she actually recorded it first. Uh, a nice. Uh, rendition of the song, very folksy. Johnny Cash heard it and said, if, it, if this doesn't hit, I'm going to record it. And then uh, something really neat happened and kind of uh, back to the dream thing. Johnny Cash actually had a dream that he heard Mexican trumpets uh, op and he heard himself singing the Ring of Fire. So he told June and Merle that he was going to record it with Mexican trumpets. And they're, you know, they're like, what? Mexican trumpets? Kind of blew their mind, but it worked. Um, but then, as I started researching, I also found out that there was some uh, speculation that June Carter wasn't there, that Johnny Cash gave her rights to it. Um, so a lot of controversy surrounding the story, but um, I still think June and Merle got together and wrote that song. You know, the great thing, something that Merle did... Uh, that I thought was great. It helped me out. Is he saved every news interview uh, from video to audio, and as far back as you know, the late fifties newspaper clippings. He saved that stuff all his life through all his marriages and all his movings, and through an an ex-wife who tried to burn everything he had. 
somehow that big garbage sack of archive, you know, survived. And um, by the time he met his last wife, Judy Kilgore, she helped, uh, you know, scan it and archive it and put it into dates. So it was handed to me in a nice package. Um, so that was kind of the core of my research. And also stories that he told me and then interviewing and, you know, Ralph Emery. And Ralph actually had a lot of input on the book. Um, so, yeah, a lot of interviews, but mostly those... Uh, you know, the archives. Yeah, I would say that the highlight uh, probably was the Johnny Horton chapter. Uh, that chapter has a lot of sort of that supernatural element that, you know, me having written a horror novel and uh, enjoying that kind of stuff, that was my favorite chapter. You know, Johnny Horton and Merle were neighbors and they were best friends. And they there was a time when they got into you know, seances and psychic activity. And the, Johnny Horton even had a, a room that he called the spook room that they would get in and, you know, do seances and things like that. But, you know, Johnny Horton had a uh, premonition that he was going to die. And he left my grandfather, uh, gave him his guitar and said, I had this premonition. Um, and he even said that he was going to try to contact Merle should he die. And he gave him a message, the drummer is a rummer and cannot hold a beat. And, uh, and sure enough, Johnny Horton dies about two weeks later. Uh, and Merle did get that message. It took about seven years later, but a group of psychics in New York called him up and said, Merle Kilgore, we have a message for you. The drummer is a rummer and cannot hold a beat. My name is Mark Rickert. I'm the author of These Are My People. Please pick up a copy today. You can find it on Amazon.com.